And, and I'll just say it right the message right here, there's no freedom in sin. You know that? If you're if you're partially in, partially out, one day you're good, next day you're living in sin, you're I mean you're up and you're down, all these kind of things. There's no freedom in that. That's not liberty. Uh, Christian liberty is not the right to just do whatever you want to do. Now, I'm not trying to preach the whole thing before we even read the scriptures, but I think it's hey, that's not what I, I want to focus in on what Christian liberty is, right? For the Christian who wants to walk with God. Who, who wants to do, I'm talking about daily, God's will for your life. Who wants to be about what God is about. With that in mind, let's start in on Galatians chapter number 5. And the Bible says in verse number 1, it says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be, Now here it is, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. It's talking about living by the law, right? Uh, that's it's talking about uh, trying to gain salvation or even the favor of God by the law. Verse number 3, For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. And we will get into that in the message. Uh, verse number 5, For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would they were even cut off which trouble you. For brethren, ye have been here it is, ye have been called unto liberty. Brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Amen. There's where the, the confusion, if you will, is amongst the brethren. Uh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, even in this, that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour and, uh, one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Are you having trouble in the flesh? Uh, maybe you even know that you're born again. If you know you're not born again, you're going to have trouble in the flesh, right? The wrath of God still abideth on you. Why? Because you're, you're condemned already, according to John 3.18, because ye have not believed on the only begotten name of the Son of God. You've not trusted in Jesus for salvation. Your, your flesh should be winning out on you because you need to get born again. You need to spiritually be born again. But Christian, if you're having trouble in the flesh, now we all have uh, some level of trouble. That's not what I'm saying. None of us is holier than thou. But I'm telling you, hey, you can live in this present world in a holy manner and not have to struggle in the flesh each and every day uh, fighting that for the, the flesh lusteth against the spirit. Look at verse 17. And the spirit against the flesh. There's the wrestling. There's the war. It feels like there's a war going on inside of me. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery. Fornication. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness. Idolatry. Witchcraft. Hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against us there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. 
Let's pray. Father God, once again, we just want to stop and pray and uh, pray for your presence to be magnified. Lord God, teach us, we pray. God, be with us. Be magnified. Stir the spirit that's within us, Lord God, the, the good Holy Spirit of God. Again, if there's one here that's lost, we pray that the brethren, Lord God, the Christian, the saints, if you will, pray that that person would get saved and we will rejoice over that one sinner that, that repents of their sin and turns to Jesus for salvation. God, but don't let us lose the joy of our salvation. Each and every one here, I pray a blessing upon, Lord God. I pray you'd touch them. You'd fill them, Lord God. Filling them is not them getting more of you, it's you getting more of them. Help them to give themselves over to you. Lord God, speak to their hearts. Lord God, draw them unto you. Uh, help them to seek after you. And you will get closer to them, Lord God. We pray you bless our preaching time in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Give me liberty or give me death. Now, I remember that from school days. I remember uh, in general, I'm not a, a, a history buff, if you will. As a matter of fact, I never liked it. Now, I was a lost person until I was 27 years old, okay? So I'm not saying these are right things, but I never liked history. And I held on to a few things, but I remember that saying, God would bring that back to remembrance. Give me liberty or give me death. And I thought about that in application to what we're looking at here today. Uh, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made you free. He's made us free. He's made us. I thank God I'm free today in the Lord Jesus. There's freedom in the Lord Jesus Christ. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. He's called you unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Liberty is not an occasion to the flesh. And I started to think, you know, there's something I've heard of in the past and it's a, it's, a, it's a false doctrine that's taught in false religion. And, and, and they say that you, can, you have so much allowance, if you will, of sin in your life. God allows this much. An indulgence, if you will. That's straight out of hell. That is not out of the Bible. People believe that. I'm not talking about people in another, in another I'm talking about people in, a, in an independent, fundamental Baptist church, King James only, believe that God, the God of heaven is okay with so much sin in your life. That is so far from the truth, you, 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 you just not got it. Now, I don't know whether you've got salvation or not, and that's not my intent, is to make you doubt your salvation. But if you're not walking in the Spirit, when you're walking in the Spirit, you're not going to have these sinful things produced in your life. Now, we're all going to have times where we trip and stumble and, and, and do things that, in the flesh. I'm not saying that. I can tell you about mine, but I'm not going to. Uh, it's under the blood. No. <laughs> hey, uh, that's not the, the intent here today is, is to, to uh, point out people's sins. That's not what I'm trying to do. I, the, the point of the message is that, hey, liberty is living in the Lord Jesus Christ. If I could lump it all up together without even getting into the, the outline, it's a daily walk. I'm talking about not just because today's Sunday. Well, today's Sunday. I guess it's time to go to the Lord's house. No, tomorrow's Monday. And guess what? Tomorrow is His day, too. Right. Tomorrow Monday is, is God's day. I'm going out. I've been out of my truck uh, for a week and a half. I'm looking forward to getting back into my 2023 Freightliner Bobtail. Uh, go, going out into the world. By the way, that's out there in the highways and hedges. Isn't that where He compels me and commands me to go to? Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come. I, I, uh, uh, you, you get worked up. You try not to. I'm glad I'm not full time. By the way. I've seen so many full-time men snuggle in. They're so comfortable. It makes you sick. I'm not trying to be mean, but that's the truth. I believe, don't he say that in Revelation? You're, you're, you're not cold. You're not hot. Because you are lukewarm, I will spew thee out of my mouth. They're lukewarm. They're not about the Father's business anymore. They're professional preachers. But guess what? Each and every one of you is going out to a portion of the highways and hedges. That's God's will for your life, for His Monday. 
for his Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and it just ever, ever, over. Hey, that's, that's Christian liberty. Is that I don't put God in this box. I'm going to let good people do this. Good, you, you, you never even... You, good people that you love, you care about, they put God in this Sunday box. God's in that Sunday box, right? He should have been in the Saturday box. He should have lived with you. Yet He should have took him everywhere you went yesterday. Give me liberty or give me death. Is a quotation attributed to an American hero, uh, Patrick Henry, from a speech that he made uh, to the Second Virginia Convention on March the 23rd of 1775. Isn't that something you're still talking about it today? 1775, at St. John's Church in Richmond, Virginia. Henry is credited with having swung the balance in convincing the convention to pass a resolution delivering Virginian troops to the Revolutionary War. Among the delegates to the convention uh, were future United States presidents such as Thomas Jefferson and George Washington. If it were base enough, here it is, he said, if it were base enough to desire it, it is now too late to retire from the contest. There is no retreat but in submission in slavery. This will preach. And as I was going over this, this speech will preach. You talk about godly men who, who use the Bible. I'm talking about to draft the founding document. I'm talking about our founding fathers. There, there are messages that are in the Constitution and that are in the Declaration of Independence. All these, they will preach. Why? Because they, they line up with the book. He said, there is no retreat. That'll preach. Christian, there's no retreat. Where are you going? Peter said, where could I go but unto the Lord? You, ye had the words of eternal life. Hey, where could I go but unto the church house? Where could I go? What else am I going to do? i got to get alone with God. i got to get my batteries recharged. I've got to get back in the Spirit of God, walking in the Spirit. There is no retreat, but listen, he says there is submission and slavery. Give me liberty or give me death. Now, he didn't say that yet, but I want to apply that again. Hey, there is liberty, Christian, in walking with God. There is liberty, and I'm talking about in swallowing your pride, so to speak, and just doing what God... Hey, whatever that thing is that God's dealing with you about that you refuse to do, He's not moving on from there. God's not going to move on and give you another task. He's not going to appease your conscience. Oh, you don't want to do it? It's okay, and pat you on the back. No, that, that's the occasion to the flesh. All right, that, that is not of God. So back up. That thing, that thing, get it right with God. There's your liberty. Walk with God. But if you don't get that right, you have death in your life. All right, you can apply that to a lost person. Who, I mean, there, there is certain death coming for you. There is physical death. There is spiritual death. You will die and go to hell one day. Ye are still in your sins. You will answer for that. But for the Christian, there is death represented here. Give me liberty or give me death. Liberty is a daily walk. It's, a, it's an often walk. It, it, it's, a, it's a now. It's a five minutes from It's a, it's a lunchtime. It's an all-day walk with God. That's liberty. Give me liberty or give me death. You will have spiritual death represented in your life. You will have these, these works of the flesh that the lost people have so prevalently in their life, but guess what? They can be in the life of a Christian too. Why? Because they're not walking in that liberty. They have spiritual death in their life. They, they can't move on from that sin. They won't get right. And there are things the flesh lusteth against the spirit. And that's capitalized there in verse number six. The spirit of God. The flesh lusteth against the spirit. And the spirit, again, capital S, against the flesh. God is not happy with that sin in your life, Christian. That is not liberty. That is not Christian liberty. Let me say it again. If you believe it, say amen. It is not Christian liberty to appease sin in your life. Amen. And these are contrary. They're against each other. The flesh warreth against 
the, the spirit, they're contrary one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. You even want to do what's right, but, you, but we can't get that liberty right. So <clears throat> back to the speech here. There is no retreat but in submission and slavery. Our chains are forged, he said. Their clanking may be heard in the plains of Boston. The war is inevitable and let it come. He said, I repeat, sir. I like that. He said, let it come and bring it on, he said. Bring the war on. It is vain, sir, to uh, uh, extenuate the matter. Gentlemen may cry, peace, peace, but there is no peace. The war is actually begun. The next gale that sweeps from the north will bring to our ears the clash of resounding arms. Listen to this. this. This gets me. I don't know if it's getting you, but it says our brethren are already in the field. Apply that to Christianity. Our brethren are already in the field. The field is white unto harvest, but the laborers are few. Right? We sit back and, and we know the, the laborers, the, the, our brethren, they're already out in the field. Are we going to go join them? Are we going to go to the field, to the battle? Or, hey, the battle is not in here. I mean, it may be when a church gets on fire and, and wants to be re, uh, uh, revived in the Lord, uh, wants to get on God's page, and He may come in and try to do some things, but a church that's just, it's kind of maintaining. Uh, if you're maintaining, you're dying, by the way. If you're not building, you are, you're if you're not gathering, the Bible says that you're, you're helping to, to, to scatter. You're a scatterer. People fall off. Uh, nature happens. People pass away. Uh, people move on. And think about it. If they're not replenished, if, if this is you right now, for what? You don't get it. You don't get it. Do you get it? Amen. There's a war happening. Amen. There is. If we're just here to play, this is a waste of time. There's a war happening. Men and women, boys and girls, day after day, moment after moment, falling off into eternity. Our brethren are already in the field. Why stand we here idle? Do you think he was thinking about Acts 111 when he said that? Which also said, Acts 111, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing into heaven? Gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. I wonder, I just wonder if he wasn't thinking about that when he said, Why stand ye here idle? What is it that gentlemen wish? What would they have? Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it. He said, Forbid it, Almighty God. I know not what course others may take, and that's just it. We can't, we, we can't. Make choices for others. We've got to do, and this is what he said, I can't, I can't determine what you're going to do. All I can do is, is preach my message, so to speak. I, I, I can give what I've got here. I, I can tell you what the Bible says, but he said this. He said, forbid it, Almighty God. I know not what course others may take. He said, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Here at Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. I hate to bring the Bible into it. Remember that page you say all that? No, I'm thinking of that. Romans chapter 6, speaking on sin, speaking on uh, this so called false doctrine of this Christian liberty, if God's okay with such and such sin, but hey, as long as, well, I don't know what the what they teach you, as long as you get it right in such and such time or whatever, it's garbage, it's hogwash. I mean, just look what the Bible says in verse number 1. He's talking about the law versus 
uh, grace. You're not, uh, and that's true. You're not under the law. You're under grace. But hey, if you were here Wednesday night, you learned that grace is not just about salvation. God's grace is about separation. God's grace is about schooling. And and and, and I believe I'm going to preach that again tonight. Because guess what? Most of you weren't here. You want to hear that? That's a good message. It's still burning in my bones. I believe. It's, hey, I'll preach it to myself again. If you ain't coming back tonight, we're going to preach it again. If you can make it, come on out. Come back to church tonight. We'll preach out of Titus chapter 2 about God's grace. So that misunderstanding God's liberty, misunderstanding God's grace. God's grace is, oh, God's okay with it. Well, let's just look what the Bible says and just get real with God. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? And there's the truth right there. It's, it, you're, you're having trouble with that sin because you're not dead to that sin. You've not crucified the flesh daily. Hey, if you got born again, that's wonderful. But how about today? Did you crucify the flesh today? That's what it's saying here. God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death? Therefore we are buried with Him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of our Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of His death, we shall be also in the likeness of His resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man, with that old nature is still there. It's still within you. Our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ shall be raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through the Lord or through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. And we'll stop at 15. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but ye are under grace. Yes, you're under grace. You're not under the law, but yet you need to understand the grace that you're under. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God Forbid. Answer that at the end, please, just so we know that everybody heard it, everybody understands. Let's, let's see what the Bible says. Say those last two words. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God, God forbid. forbid. He's not okay with these little pet sins, so-called. So I'd like to preach in the few minutes I have left here this morning. And I believe it's okay because God's getting out what He wants out. Uh, I'd like to preach on Christian liberty. Christian liberty. Guess what I did? I Googled what Christian liberty is. Now, I'm not going to preach to you Google, but I am going to tell you what Google said. And, and the, the sad thing is that it kind of lines up more closely talking about Google about what Christian liberty and Christian freedom is than maybe some even Christians. Christian liberty or Christian... Go ahead and Google it if you want. Search it out. Look it up. Look it up. Uh, or Christian freedom is the idea that Christians are free to serve God after being freed in Christ. That's a pretty good definition from the world, isn't it? I'm talking about Google said that. Google said it. It's a doctrine that protects Christians from people and institutions attempting to control their consciences. It's talking about living by the law, trying to gain salvation by the law. And that's, I'm not for that either. I think we understand that. We don't follow the law to get saved. Hey, we, we, we're, we're under grace. Yes, the goodness of God uh, by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Christian liberty is often discussed in terms of what activities Christians are free to do. I like to just say I'm free to live for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Right? Some examples of modern day issues related to Christian liberty include alcohol consumption. We will hit on, preach on that. 
as a former alcoholic. That's unbelievable. You know what? Young people need to hear the truth. It says alcohol consumption, women's head coverings, and birth control and the such. Some characteristics of Christian liberty include freedom from sin. Christians are free from the guilt and power of sin. Praise the Lord. Freedom from the law. Christians are free from the burden of the law. Praise the Lord. Freedom from extra-biblical traditions. Christians are free from extra-biblical traditions and commandments of men adding to the gospel, right? Adding to it. We're free from that. But that doesn't mean we're free to sin. Google seemingly has a stronger stance on just what Christian liberty is than maybe some Christians do. One more illustration, a quick one. The Declaration of Independence. A phrase from the United States Declaration of Independence that lists three unalienable rights that all humans are endowed with by their Creator. And you know it, right? Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The phrase is, is part of the Declaration of Independence. The statement that the purpose of government is to protect, isn't that something? The, the purpose of government is to protect these rights. And that people have the right to revolt if the government tries to withhold them. I can get in trouble here, but I'm going to move on. That's not the message. To... The Declaration of Independence is not legally binding, but it has inspired people around the world to fight for freedom and equality. All those things that I just said, they will preach. They agree with the Bible, right? This is not something that is made. You're made to go by, right? You may a parent may force a, a young person to, to abide by these laws, but if they don't want to do it, if God don't have their heart, right? If they, it, there, there's no freedom in that. But it has inspired people. This thing has inspired people around the world for fight to fight for freedom and equality. On July 4th of 1776, 56 men gathered in the State House in Philadelphia in Pennsylvania to adopt an official declaration of independence from Britain. There was no fanfare, no trumpet sounding, no, no cheering. There was no parade give for, given for them. They were just men of God, I believe, who were doing it because God had put it in their heart. They, they knew of God. They knew what God was about. And they knew if they didn't stand for something, that it was going to fall, right? Give me liberty or give me death. We hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men are created equal. That they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights. I'm talking about life. Hey, Christian, you need to tell them that John 10.10 10 says, A thief cometh not but to steal and to kill but and to destroy. I am come, Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. John 14.6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. If you're not impressed with some of this, it's okay. I go back into my memory and I still remember the little GW. You know, the little youth ministry over at Grace and Severable. Severable and he, he memorized that verse. I can still hear them saying. I can still I can imagine the little fella has, has went over and over in his head. The key to life. Liberty. Isaiah 61 verse 1 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. The pursuit of happiness. Thomas Jefferson incorporated this into the Declaration of Independence after taking it from John Locke. Locke believed that the pursuit of happiness was found the foundation. It was the foundation of liberty. The pursuit of happiness. Christian, what's your, where are you pursuing happiness to? What is your pursuit of happiness? What is your declaration of independence, if you will? Galatians 5.1 says, Stand ye fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. I'm standing with Him. How about, are you going to stand with the Lord? I'm not trying to say that pridefully. I'm saying I'm going to stand with Christ. 
I'm going to stand with what I know is right. I'm going to, I'm going to build on what I know builds and not tears down. I'm not worried about a social club. I'm not worried about being a, lead, a cheerleader. I'm not worried about being, being a club leader. I want to be a God called, God ordained. I'm talking about Holy Ghost filled. I'm talking about fire down from heaven. I'm talking about God can still do a work in 2024. And, 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 and let's do it. Let's see God do something. I'm not, let's pursue happiness. Let's stand, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Amen. Stand in the gospel. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. I was entangled for so many years. Paul's point of his Galatia, to his Galatian brethren to stand in the freedom of the gospel of grace and not return. He said, and not return in verse uh, number 4. It says this, Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. When they come back in, try to add to the try to add to the gospel message. Try to add that law back in. That you are fallen from grace. It's not talking about losing your salvation. It's talking about Paul points out to the brethren to stand in the freedom of the gospel of grace and not return to be entangled the entangling bondage of the Old Testament law. Galatians five thirteen for brethren. Ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. The problem is that some have abused this principle of Christian liberty, turning it into a license to sin. As this unfolds, it turns into bitter division in their midst. I'm talking about it causes problem in the church house. Certain Christians have to be faithful, certain don't. That causes problems. I, there's places I want to move already in this church, and 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 already on my heart, I, I you know there's things I want to do, but because we're not all on the same page, it's required. It's not a suggestion. Required for stewards to be found faithful. It's a requirement. Some abuse this. As this unfolds, it turns into division in the, in the midst, in the church, in the, with the people. Here we see two types of death in verses 1 through 4. If one could be justified by the law or any part of it, such as circumcision, then what need had he of Christ? Likewise, if one could be saved or kept saved by the way he lived, why turn to Christ? So the error of the Galatians was that they were trying to mingle Christ with the law. Trying to mingle Christ with the law. Hey, that is the same as trying to, to mingle so-called grace with sin. Paul points it, his point is profound. He calls them to account. He says, ye are fallen from grace. Now contrary to some allegation of some modern theology, they had not fallen from salvation or even from Christ. Rather, they had fallen away from the principle of grace. The Judaizers had misdirected them back to the law. In so doing, they had departed from the lofty principle of grace. Galatians 5.13, look at it one last time. For brethren, ye have been not been, or ye have been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. But by love serve one another. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Kind of bounces back and forth between what the flesh produces and what the spirit produces. If we can live our lives on a day-to-day -day basis in the new nature, we will preclude the old nature, the flesh, all sin in the Christian life emanates from the flesh. If we, with the help of the Holy Ghost, can so order our lives that we live in the new nature of the Spirit, we will have the victory over this sin. Herein lies one of the secrets of the Christian life. There's an ongoing conflict between the sinful old nature 
with which we were born in the new nature created in righteousness after regeneration. There is a continual battle between the corrupt, selfish, old nature. I'm talking about you. You look around at every one of your eyeballs. Look me in the God-given eyeballs. Everyone, and including this guy. There's a daily battle in the, between the two natures. And the holy nature, the Spirit of God. There are These are mortal enemies. Mortal enemies. The flesh in particular will prevent us from doing what we ought to do. The new nature or the Spirit will prevent us from what we want to do. The key is to walk in the Spirit. And we'll end with this. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only not use liberty for an occasion to the flesh. But by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. This I say then, walk in the Spirit. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit. Here's what will be produced in your life. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are of Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And you have liberty in what was just read. Liberty is freedom in Christ. It's to walk day by day, moment by moment. My liberty doesn't allow me to sin, but it, uh, it's the opposite. It's my liberty allows me to live for the Lord, to walk in the Spirit. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Think about this as we close. We can uh, have our pianists come get ready for invitation. All those soldiers that put up their lives for the cause of liberty. What were they?